506 to 526. And then came the Arbitration Act of 1899, which went in parallel with the provisions of arbitration in the Code of Civil Procedure. The Act of 1899 applied to the presidency towns of Bombay, Madras, and Calcutta. And it was applicable only for arbitration without the intervention of the court. Whereas the provisions in this Code of Civil Procedure were applicable for arbitration with and without the intervention of the court, as well as arbitrations in a pending suit. In 1904, when Lord Curzon was the Viceroy of India, he appointed Sir Earl Richards as member legal to the Governor General's Council with the mandate to bring reforms in the laws in British India. He revised the Code of Criminal Procedure and in 1907 made a suggestion that the law of arbitration has to be in a codified form. It was too spread out in different statutory instruments. In the 1920s, there was the Civil Justices Committee that was constituted that gave the same recommendation that there has to be a codified law of arbitration. What happened is that the, an, an amendment was brought in the Code of Civil Procedure in 1908. You will see that Section 89 of the Code of Civil Procedure provided for arbitration in the three different forms and in order for it to be taken out from the Code of Civil Procedure into an Act of Parliament, the entire law of arbitration was placed in the schedule to the Code of Civil Procedure, Schedule 2. So if you pick up your books and you see that on the enactment of the Arbitration Act of 1940, Section 89 of the Code of Civil Procedure was omitted and so was the second schedule to the Code of Civil Procedure. And we had the codified form of the Arbitration Act of 1940. I had said it at one of the seminars earlier that the manner in which the Arbitration Act of 1940 is applied and interpreted by the courts in the case of Guru Nanak Foundation, AIR 1981 Supreme Court, the judge is held that the manner in which the Arbitration Act of 1940 is being applied has made the legal philosophers weep and the lawyers laugh. And I would say perhaps same is the position today. This remark in a judgment became the precursor in India to bring the Arbitration and Conciliation Act of 1996. It is based on the Ancetral Model Law. And since its enactment, there have been many amendments in it because there were loopholes. It was not commensurate with it being applied in India. We in Pakistan also have tabled a bill in the National Assembly. The purpose being that there should be standardization of laws the Ancetral model of law on arbitration has been adopted by many, many countries. And there is no reason why Pakistan should not adopt it. But it remains to be seen whether in future our legislature has the time to delve into this. But for the time being, the onerous responsibility on the judiciary is to interpret the 1940 Act such that the lawyers do not, that the lawyers do not laugh that the lawyers weep and the legal philosophers laugh. And the purpose being to make it a time-saving device and an expense-saving device. Arbitration being one of the forms of the ADR can go side by side 
with mediation. But I am earnestly looking forward to this project of mediation being a success in the Islamabad capital territory, and we all need your, we need your support for that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Justice Aurangzeb, for that uh, very uh, enlightening uh, 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 remarks and, and, and speech. I think it's heartening to, to know that the Islamabad High Court is uh, taking very practical steps to create the capacity which is so needed to make ADR work. And I particularly like your um, reference to the UNSI Trial Act. It's something which uh, uh, I think many countries in Asia have now now adopted. I think Pakistan is a bit of a laggard, and we need to really uh, re reform our Arbitration Act uh, because it is it is now um, quite an aberration when you look at what is going on in other developing countries, which have moved very quickly to to adopt that. And the UNSI trial law, I think you know, or some version of it, uh, if we if we adopt it, it will go a long way in instilling greater confidence uh, in our in our system. Without much ado, we're running a bit behind time, so I'm going to request uh, the next two speakers to please try to be about 10 minutes each. Uh, Dr. Nuthar Prasha, please. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I would like to begin, first of all, by expressing my gratitude to all the honorable speakers, the viewers, our guests, ladies and gentlemen. The attendance here today demonstrates, and what we have heard today demonstrates, that one would deliberate in vain if one was to try to establish that there is no need for an ADR system to supplement the existing system. Currently, access to justice and time-sensitive justice is simply not possible for the average litigant. The statistics are alarming. There are 2.5 million cases pending in the courts of Pakistan, about which 53,000 cases are pending in the Supreme Court alone. Small contractual disputes take over 1,027 days 